Hello everyone, this is Renault, and welcome back. Hit that like button and hit subscribe. Anyway, uh, last time we uh, kind of uh, took just a review of uh, uh, the Invasion of the Triceratons Part 3. It was kind of uh, consisting of the Triceratons getting fucking wrecked by using poor tactics and getting beat up by the Foot Clan, even though the Triceratons should have advanced technology from space. Anyway, uh, before we get started into this review, let's do our typical hellos. Hello, Joker. Hello, Plastic Plants. Uh, hello, Hot Chocolate. And, uh, hello, TMNT. Number 79. This is the penultimate episode of the Invasion of the Triceraton series. And I have to say, uh, before I get into this in too much detail, um, the Triceratons' performance this time around has been really disappointing, just because they have advanced futuristic space technology, and they're not using any of it. Instead, they're uh, getting beat up by people with no weapons and just baseball bats, even though they have advanced guns, even though Triceratons have advanced guns. Uh, I would imagine that they would be launching attacks from space, which has happened in just about every other iteration of the series. And instead, they're just landing on Earth and getting beat up. And uh, I do want to mention that uh, this time around, I talked about the art in the last issue and how it wasn't quite right. And I also want to point out uh, this issue also had some uh, substandard art. And uh, looking through the editorial page... It turns out that the original artist, uh, Saucedo, Cor Corsiero, um, he had to uh, s take a step back and relieve himself from the series. And so Ravel took over, and Ravel is not as good of an artist as Corsiero. Uh, yeah. So anyway, let's get started. Mm. So right away, we have some continuity issues. Uh, the book starts out with a double page, well it actually starts off with uh, the Triceratons and the Earth Protection Force in f Furious Combat, but I wanted to highlight that there are some continuity issues, and, or as uh, some people would say, conveyance issues. We have uh, April O'Neil's dad and her mom being transported through the city in this convoy. Uh, military grade convoy actually but uh, we didn't see them receive this convoy when did the uh, convoy arrive that's not something we got to see it just kind of shows them inside the convoy granted it makes and sense that uh, we knew that this was going to happen it's just we didn't see them get in we didn't see the arrival whatever and uh, we're also coming across a couple of wasted panels. For example, uh, they're going through, they're talking about how it's a war zone, they're getting it all on camera, they, re they see this symbol, and they don't really recognize uh, from the Earth Forces, and they see the Earth Protection Force uh, symbol, and they don't recognize it. Well, we're going to get to the bottom of this when we speak with Baxter Stockman, um, I'd uh, relay some messages to our driver, but I don't speak binary. Um, again, wasted panels. We don't need to... It doesn't matter if their driver is a robot or not. We don't need that. Let's skip some pages. And we'll skip to uh, Master Splinter uh, talking to the turtles. Uh, along with Jenica. And so Master Splinter is talking about how, hey, I'm your father. I'm going to tell you what to do. It's kind of, it's there's it's a lot of rehash of the previous argument they were having before. I'm clan, the Foot Clan. You're the Hamato Clan. You're going to stay put. Again, wasted panels. And then just a couple of cheap shots that are kind of out of place. Raphael, you know, is a hothead. He's the guy who's always going to say, hey, why did you say that to my face? Or whatever, you know, that's who he is. Anyway. 
um, Leonardo is telling him, hey, stand down. And so Leonardo's like, hey, just stop. We're going to see what we can do to confront the Earth Protection Force. And then Master Splinter says, It's a shame you must resort to physical intervention to control your soldiers. I'm disappointed in you, Leonardo. Well, you know, this is something that Raphael and both Leonardo are calling him out on. Uh, he's uh, obviously speaking this way as his father, but it, whether he's speaking to him as his father or as his cl the cl leader of the uh, Foot Clan, it's at, it's an out of place dig. It just does it rings hollow and insincere, like a cheap jab. Meanwhile, the tur Ninja Turtles are calling him out, saying, "You want to keep you keep trying to say you're our father, but also that you that you want to em emotionally manipulate us as our father." But also want to distance yourself from us by claiming to be a, the leader of the Foot Clan, while we are part of Clan Hamato, and they're they're just calling out his hypocrisy, and all that, and so uh, then they start talking to Jenica. Let me uh, flip the page, where they uh, give a you know the a little bit of a cliché speech where, you know. Just because he's your uh, master doesn't mean he's right and that you always do what he says. We did what was right because if you're second in command, you're not necessarily following his orders if you're just a yes person. And so she just kind of creates a conniving point that, oh, well, during a changing of the guards, there may be a brief chance for you to escape. But... She's not doing Hamato Yoshi any favors in this way. Because this means that she's operating behind uh, Master Splinter, Hamato Yoshi. She's operating, uh, she's operating behind his back. If she had actually confronted him directly and says, Please, Master Splinter, what you're doing is not right. Then that would be honorable and courageous. When she's plotting behind the... Master Splinter's back to make arrangements for the Ninja Turtles to escape. That's disloyalty. At least insofar as she didn't even try to confront Master Splinter directly. She just kind of goes behind his back and lets the Ninja Turtles go. And yes, we're supposed to sympathize with her because she's quote-unquote doing what's right. But, eh, doing what's right uh, depends on what your point of view is. The point of view is that she's not, my point of view is she's not actually doing what's right because she's, well, quite frankly, she's conspiring behind Master Splinter's back to set the Ninja Turtles free when Master Splinter wants the Ninja Turtles to stay put. Now, if they had simply overpowered her or knocked her out or tricked her or something, that would be different, but that's not what happens. Anyway, let's skip a couple pages. And so, obviously, the Turtles have escaped. They're in the middle of the war zone. It's in the middle of the night now. And so, first they got attacked by the Triceratons, and they escaped. And then the uh, Triceratons were getting sniped and taken out by a sniper. Because uh, the, the plot is making the Triceratons look kind of pathetic. <laughs> and so, the Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles have to come forward and save them from a sniper. And so... You know, snipers don't actually work alone very often. They usually have someone to help. So they take out the sniper and the person who was helping them. But again, um, it just kind of highlights that there is indeed a fog of war in this kind of situation. And that makes sense. But uh, let's skip a couple more pages. Did I have a chance to admit? Hold on. Let me go back a couple, a little bit. Okay, so sorry about that. I'm going to go back a little bit, um, but it doesn't change anything too much. Uh, but there is this really poor sequence here where the um, the O'Neills do finally make it to Baxter Stockman. And, you know, 
Dr. O'Neill is very impressed. Uh, I don't know if they used to work with each other or if O'Neill worked for Baxter Stockman, but they had a very close working relationship. Um, O'Neill is kind of impressed with uh, Baxter Stockman. Uh, technological and uh, intellectual prowess. So that's, they have a healthy scientific respect, but then they go into this whole capitalism bad nonsense. So, uh, for example, he appreciates that uh, Baxter Stockman is sending out these um, convoys to save people who are trapped in the war zone to keep people safe. So Dr. O'Neill's like, that's mighty benevolent of you. And then April says, he's not doing it for free, Dad. And then, just for absolutely no reason, am I to be blamed that the city sees the value of the resources I have available to aid it in its time of need? The name may have changed, but TCRI is no less a for-profit endeavor than Stockton ever was. Interplanetary war, or no. Now, if you will all excuse me, I have a weekly stockholder call to attend. Miss O'Neill, I am confident you'll do your best to make your parents feel at home. Sure, doctor. So again, this whole capitalism is bad, profiteering off of war, blah. Like, miss me with that shit, <laughs> you know? There's always profit people profiteering off of war. Baxter Stockman has valuable resources for use of the interplanetary force. It is weird that he would have a stockholder's call to attend to right in the middle of this war. But, you know, that just gives him a chance to just leave. Um, hold on. Oh, and uh, there is one last thing I want to mention here on this pen these two pages. I know the turtles told... Uh, so Dr. O'Neill is like... I know the turtles told you these aliens aren't here to be malicious, kiddo, but it sure looked that way when we saw them. Instead of running the glorified shuttle business he's got going on, maybe your boss, Baxter Stockman, should be spending more time figuring out a way to get the Triceratons out of town so they can pick on someone else instead. Dad, you're a genius. Sorry, gotta run. Like mother, like daughter. Um, I'm not quite sure what plan April O'Neil has, but I, I don't know. I haven't read ahead, but I have a feeling it's going to be stupid. As, uh, yeah. Got a, what's the thing from Star Wars? I've got a real bad feeling about this. Anyway, skipping ahead. Um, that I've already seen. Okay, yeah. So eventually, uh, the tri they're in the, uh, the Triceratons are setting up a, like a command center on the ground. And so uh, she's just talking about how once we take over New York, they will have no choice but to bargain with us. And then we will take over other areas one by one. Which, think about that for a second. They take over New York City. And then they bargain to get more territory? Uh, the United States would not put up with that. Uh, they might, might be able to bargain to get New York City in extenuating circumstances. Maybe. Maybe. But then they, they're not going to get just let the Triceratons take over one by one. Again, that's stupid. <laughs> and then uh, Master Splinter shows up. He has a plan to assassinate the commander. But the actual co commander commander is in space. So this plan is stupid as well. So Master Splinter intends to kill the Commander Zom, but again, the leader of the Triceratons is actually in space. She is at best a glorified ground commander. And I don't mean to say that in a negative way, but the leaders of all Triceratons is still out in space. That's just a fact of the matter. 
with their space weapons that are far more advanced than what the humans have, which have not yet been used in this quote-unquote war. So anyway, Master Splinter shows up. He makes it very clear he intends to kill um, Commander Zom. And that's why we're here. To make sure that she does survive. Again, you can see some of this bad art by Ravel. Now, um, points are going to be marked off for having this bad art. But I'm not going to take as much off or i take you have to take into consideration this is a replacement artist so he probably had to rush and that's probably why everything looks so wonky but then just stupid little things like all these bandages yeah they were in the middle of a crossfires between the triceratons and the earth protection force but these little bandages and whatever don't really add anything to the story. They don't really... You can just... You can show that they're hurt without having all these out-of-place bandages. It's just a little nitpicky thing that... Just... I'm noticing. Anyway, thank you so much for watching. Once again, uh, to ensure that this does not... Uh, that this uh, video is not considered uh, suitable for children... Um, Copa demands that you indicate that it is not suitable for children. So fuck Copa, fuck YouTube, and uh, fuck this storyline. Fuck this bad plotting. Alright, thank you so much. Bye-bye.